Shop Dog says, welcome back. Welcome back to another Pontiac video. It's a little more brisk out than it's been. Uh, we've got a few things we're going to discuss in just a few minutes. But mostly right now, Shop Dog wants a pretzel. For those that are astute, you might notice that the car looks like it's ready to go for buying. Well, the rear doesn't have any suspension right now. It's all sitting up on jacks because that's what it finally took. So the body is actually floating above the frame right now. That's what it actually took to get these rears out. In fact, funny story, on the passenger side, when I was working on that, up in this cup up here was actually a crow's foot. So we get a free tool. Yeah, that one right there. That was sitting on top. So that's interesting. Uh, we have gotten some advice from people about drilling holes and stuff. The problem is, in this car, if we drill a hole... Uh, it's pretty noticeable. It's not the same as a uh, passenger car where that's in the trunk. So eh, we didn't want to go down that road. So while they're out, and uh, it was a fight. In fact, I think I will toss over to the Shop Dog Short that I sent Kevin the other day. And I'll be right back. Shop Dog Short. That sucked. So I've got every body mount loosened quite a bit. I got the body sitting on jack stands onto the thing. And then I picked up the body, and you can just get a wrench in there. It takes a long time, but I got it off. So here is the passenger side. Okay, so after all of that, I also got this one out. Um, Shop Dog helped, of course. One of the things we decided is, since we already know that one of them on the valve in there leaks, that we were going to go ahead and replace all four of those. Well, he accidentally ordered eight and luckily he did because while these are out and because these are so hard to get at we're just gonna replace these two so we'll pop these bolts off and just replace them um, and the other great big thing is while he was doing it we we have figured that especially with the gas tank and people getting in and out we have to have these level system so here's five hundred and seven dollars worth of of potentiometers to help us do some leveling this will be a big chunk of what we're trying to figure out today is how all this works and how we want to set it up when you look in their instructions you know they give you some rather kind of vague here's some examples you know and we'll go with that it's one of the things is once we get the spring back in we can get everything to height it, it can't be that hard the hardest part i think is making sure that uh, we only use within the window they want, that things can't get hit, that they're not in the way of anything, tires don't touch them, rocks off the road don't break them. You know, these, you know, they can be bent, they can be shortened. So, yeah, it's a it's a peculiar system. The bigger thing is, because this car's so big, I'm hoping these cables are long enough. On the upside, it's not like it's a high frequency or anything, but on the downside, I hate splicing in under the car. Because that cable was 18 feet? 18 feet, and these rear ones are 12 feet. Yeah, the rear ones could probably get away with being 6 feet. I sure wish the front ones were 20. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, 18 feet's the length of the car. The problem is making sure that we can route it the way, you know, get the routing ideal. So you can see I'm holding it here. So it's just a little longer than the length of the car. This is going to actually be close. It's going to be tight. We're going to have to get real creative, I think, on the driver's side. And, of course, figuring out where we're going to run them through. One thing that's nice is, you know, well, those are Metropac. Was that one also Metropac? Okay. Oh, these are pull-throughs. Never mind. I was going to say it's real easy to de-pin them because I thought they were weather packs, but they're Metropacs. Well, no, this one's not a draw-through, though. This one's a backload. Okay, some Metro Packs load from the front and some come from the back. These are back loads. So, yeah, we'll be able to just pop these out, you know, on here. We'll pop them, pass the cable through, repopulate it, pass the next cable through. The other big thing is we will also, while they're popped, label them. You know, it's nice that they labeled them here, you know, right rear, left rear and stuff. But we will make our own labels, which, of course, is the whole point of the label machine. And that way we can't get it screwed up because... It, those are in such a hard place to work that I don't want to spend a bunch of time goofing around, plugging and unplugging. 
you guys remember way back in there oh old fat guy so we're gonna have to put the windows down and deal with that oh i remember this was up because air conditioning worked because we were in the air conditioning all right shop dogs coming in here to see what pixie's up to today as well so what have we got going on here Uh, dark chocolate and so you can see it's a little bit darker than the original one um, but use the template that I did last week and I will put that together and so hopefully I will have it in one and now are you going to experiment with doing that stitch this way um, actually it was funny thing we were watching videos on Catalina's and somebody had or a Bonneville and which somebody had redone the dash and the seam went right along here and came down this way so that is the oh. way that I am going to do it that means now you only have to make that fold in this fold mm -hmm. you don't have to try to make this crazy fold yeah so this top piece will come down to here and then the bottom piece will come here and we'll wrap down and around. so perfect and I'm gonna do a template of that first before I cut, and then we should be ready to go. You mean measure three times and then cut up the expensive stuff one time? Correct. <laughs> All right, I had lost the people, but I found you guys. So, we just took the cups off real quick. It's gonna make it easier to, to not only change these, but we wanna kinda of clean the top, make sure everything's good. You know, make sure that nothing looks like it's damaged in any way. Wow. That's yeah, I know. There, there. It's fun to loosen. There we go. Well, we're learning more and more. Look at that. Wait, let me move my goggles here. See that? Well, to do the spring pocket thing, they just kind of hacked down some washers to get that to bridge. And lo and behold, that rubbed into one of them. And there's our leak. So we're not crazy. And right now it's a slow leak, but eventually it won't be. So we're going to get a little more creative here. I'm going to actually pick the car up and take a good close look and see what we really need to do there. Let's take a peek and see what we got here. So we've got the car up a little bit now. And it's probably easier to see the one on this side, I think. Yeah, so you can see where they made some kind of big cut here. With a cutoff wheel. Not sure why they had to do that. But they made a big cut here. That was probably their way of getting the airline out. They didn't dress it at all. But that's what that washer is doing. I wonder if the best thing we can do is just clamp the washer up in there and give a couple tack welds on it. We'll, we'll take a look and see what the idea here needs to be. And the one on this side, so that's where they did their cuts on that side. So, okay, we'll, we'll play with this a little bit and see if we can improve what they did. Shop dog's doubtful. Look up there. See the one inch notch they cut in? They cut a bigger one on this side, but not by a lot, but still. The important thing is, that's actually what caused the damage. So... What we're thinking, since we want this just pointing straight out anyway, it's the only way we can get the hose out, and we've got this washer, why can't we take one of these, clean it up, cut a little fence, and just weld a fence here, weld a fence here. It still gives us plenty of room. It doesn't interfere with this washer, you know, so that can go in. Also, if we do it right, now the washer can't ever cut into the fitting either. Um, like I said, eh, yeah, it adds more work, but now these won't fail. That problem now goes away. So I think that's the direction we're going to go. So that added some intrigue. So we are starting our prep work. I cut some little fences, diesels in there, cleaning them up a little bit so they don't hurt us. And then I'll figure out how I'm clamping those in, get the welder set up, and we'll do a couple nice little tacks. Just like a little hot glue, that concept's working just fine. Getting ready to do that side and he's cleaning the other two. Okay, I've got a nice coat of anti-corrosion on there. 
you know, or paint, whatever you want to call it. So that one's drying. Getting ready to set this one up. So I'll get this one cleaned up, pop them in there, get them tacked, and then weld them down. Okay, so that one is now cooling. We just did a clock fit on the first one, and we're not even going to have to open the driver's side. It barely fits, but barely is all we care about. So when we slid that up in there, that you can see, touched here, touched here. So that's all it needs to do. Advantage of chasing these. One of those came off really hard. So this is what it's starting to look like here. Got this one together. And then we're just going to make a short extension and an elbow for both sides so that we never have to get in here. So I know we've got some new line. I just got to dig it out. All right. Now, if you recall, when we took the, the driver's side out, it didn't have a little extension piece, and these are impossible to get at. So, the lesson we learned on the passenger side is, we're going to have just a little piece out here that we can trim down to whatever we need and put an elbow on there. So now we can service the line without having to go all the way back. So, you can see what I had to do with the washers. You know, they're nice and keyed so they, they clear this. The beauty here is now, when this is in that pocket, that cannot possibly rub into the frame. It's it's just not going to happen. So, we no longer have, yeah, we don't have to worry about that. That's what happened. We thought at first it was the washer, but then when we looked at the width of the washer and the width of that, and we went up to the frame, what had happened on the driver's side is this clocked enough that that was rubbing against where they had cut out the spring pocket. So that's why we wanted these, and they cost us nothing. You know, just some scrap off the floor and a couple feet of welding wire. So those are on there. That'll protect them. Now we feel a lot more confident that this isn't going to crash down while we're driving. We still haven't started that mess yet because this took a little longer because we wanted to make sure, like every other thing in this car, that when it goes back together, it's considerably healthier than when we took it apart. The other thing I want to do is come check on Pixie, see how she's doing. I'd asked Shop Dog, but he went inside to Mama. So, what are you up to, Pix? I am working on my new template for... Um, oh, because of that oh, change curve. to the stitch? Yeah, because I decided to curve it this way and wrap this. So, I'm playing on my wrap. I did one cut. Didn't like it, so I'm doing another one, and we'll see how it fits. Well, that's the beautiful thing, though, is you can experiment with it and then only do it the right way once yes. and not make three or four of them. And since I have extra fabric from my other samples, I have stuff to play with. Yeah, boy, it's going to be really nice when you get that... Uh, post machine with the double needles and then you can get that other machine that does that 270 thread mm -hmm. i know i can't wait to see the space you guys rent out yeah yeah neighbor jeff and shop dog have decided to come and supervise again see what we're up to but one of the things that we've been doing pretty consistently anywhere that it's hard to get at one of these lines is adding just a little protective coating so we've been using basically just washer line over these that works great and then one of the things you want to do is just give it a quick secure but now that we've got these we've got those washers cut down we welded these in i think this is going to go together pretty slick so on the driver's side originally these this one just pushed straight in it didn't have an elbow on the passenger side we did have an elbow but i really like the serviceability of having this out where we can get at it so that's how we're going to go I'm going to go ahead and go put this in, and then I'll bring it right back. Supervisor right. Shop Dog is on me, but it is really hard to get up in here. Holy cow. Getting all the washers and everything lined up because they're indexed. That was something, but I'm finally on it and finally tightening it. So, and the rocket wrench has to actually go on upside down to get down in that hole to even do it. So, if you're doing something similar, patience, patience, patience. At this point, we now have these airbags back in. So we're getting ready to drop the body back down. Oh, let me give you some light. So we're going to drop the body back down. We got all that on. We'll get the body down, tighten all the body mounts, and then we'll drop the car and work on that other leaking fitting. 
before we worry about those sensors. And then when we do the sensors, we're probably going to have to increase the size of this hole for the wiring. We'll, we'll figure that out. Maybe there's somewhere else we can come in. We're not sure yet. But I do know that that plug is in a really bad spot. Right, he's just finishing up the body mounts. Shop dog did decide to come out and check on what we're doing. I think Pixie's still in here playing with her experiment here. All right. So what do we got going on here, Pix? I am, now that I know I have a good template, I am made, taking my template from last week and altering it. So, oh yeah, that's quite a bit of difference in the material because well, of where it sweeps. Actually, it came down this way. This is the way it was going to be done. And since I'm adding that additional piece to wrap around, that's why it's so different. So. Yeah, this is a nice material. I like I really, the grain. I like this stuff. Um, unfortunately, it's not the one it's not doesn't come in the dark enough brown. Yeah, it's a shame because this pebble hide like this really hides everything. Well, yeah. And the other other thing, though, is that this one, if we're going to use the dark brown, as if we redo the door panels and I use it in the door panels, the graining of that one matches the graining of the original material. Okay, yeah. yeah or cause... this would not, so it would be kind of a And common. some people would notice that. Mm-hmm. Not Shop Dog. He doesn't care. Yeah. He just wants a soft spot. Mm -hmm. Yep, so come back later. We'll see what we got. And with that, we're ready to drop the car back down. Let me come out here. Oh, the shop dog's out grazing. And look at that. All right, we're working down in this hole, getting some things unplugged. We're really trying to not pull all of that. I just had attached that to that to drain the tank. The front two airbags still have some air pressure in them, but uh, obviously the rears don't because we just hooked them up and the tank has no pressure. So here, let me uh, avoid some copyright problems here. So the next thing we want to do is the fronts are holding. Those have been holding for over a week. So we're not worried about the fronts, but we want to pull and clean up the rears and change even though the new ones are shorter they'll still work just fine for our application but we want to get the rears changed and probably pull and clean the uh solenoids on the rears as well okay he's cleaning that out a little bit this is the one that leaked so it leaked by one of those silver rings it was a slow bubble but it was a bubble and we don't even want to deal with that now, one of the things that we definitely noticed is obviously the new ones are a bit shorter, but functionality wise, they'll work. It'll work just fine. Joy has begun. He has started the fun part. Oh. And then you can see where the Ride Tech module is, kinda, under that compressor. That's where I get to plug that one uh, wire harness well, in. We've come to accept that there's exactly no chance we're going to get that harness on without lifting this pod up. So I'm getting ready to climb in here. He's gonna pick the car up and we're gonna do those four bolts that go through the floor. We're gonna lift those and then we can tilt the pod and maybe get in there. So what we're trying really hard not to do is deal with the fact that the front two airbags still have a hundred and some pounds in them. Nothing else does, but they do. Okay, I'm way up in the air. Diesel's down there, we got those off. And now I've got this up enough that I should be able to get in there and add that connector. Just so conveniently located. I'm taking my ride down and uh, we've got all that in. That connector is not the easiest thing in the world to get to. We had to take the whole AirPod off. So, you know, it is what it is. We know now, well, that won't be a next time. I'm not doing this again. This is too much hassle. So now we're gonna fill it up get air in it, you know, which will take a little while, let it run, and then from that point, then we can start playing the, uh, what's our travel, getting that measured out on our four corners and start working out how those uh, level systems come together. It'll take a little while, because that is a 100% empty tank, but he's getting ready to start her up and uh, 
let that run for a bit just so we can see where we're at it's not going to be happy so you can hear those things running now and we just hooked the battery back up so it'll take it a few minutes before this is at ride height again heading back from a salsa tasting except it wasn't salsa this time it was habanero pepper sauce and uh it's a little zippy so let's see if this tank has filled up so the car's still running that's always good so we don't appear to be there yet where are we at 145 on the tank and does it say we're at two well the easy way for me to tell here is are we still sitting on the jack no so the car picked up all right so one of the things we want to do is of course collapse the jack but another thing we need to do is figure out how we're going to measure our full sweep to do those sensors so right now he's going all the way up and yeah heading all the way up which will take a minute because i'll have to keep pulling the tank and then we're going to pick the car up find a couple reference points make a few measurements and then we're going to bring it down to one pick the car up take those two same reference points because we need to figure out you know in our area with the swing here let me show you a thing we're going to need to know is from our fixed point and then against whatever's moving how how much range do we have because this may not be the right length here to to get our best use of the sensor so we're just going to go ahead and take that data in just a few minutes all right to show you roughly what i'm doing on this corner for my reference which may or may not be the points we use is i'm using this sway bar end link as my distance in this point right here up was eight inches when this covered that piece of tape and then i hung the tape from this bar up here down and that gave me that eight inches and that is when the car is all the way up i'm going to go find a part a spot in the back make a similar thing and then we're going to drop the car and see what the difference is okay we think we have our location so if we can hide one of these in there we're obviously going to have to alter this bracket a little bit but you can see from this point to literally right here is all i'm using as my reference right now that gives me seven inches to the middle of that i'll get it marked a little better then we'll pick the car up and see what that is so we can figure out where on here we want to be to get our 90 degrees we're going to show you what we have now the car is all the way up from that fixed point on the lowing tra or lower trailing arm, when the car was down, this point on the arm was seven inches away from this point. Now it's ten and a half inches away from that point, from this point on the arm. So we've got that there, and we were checking our 90, and when you go from over to over, we're way within our 90, and yet still pretty much maximizing our sweep. So that's going to mean that uh, we're going to wind up with a rod that looks kind of like this. You know, it'll be, the eye will be right in here. And then when the car comes down, oh wait, and no, the car will be, the ride will be here. And then when the car goes up, it'll do that. So it'll be interesting. We're thinking on that. We came to check and see. Pixie's doing a little sanding here. That's ready to now does this have to that'll get beveled down and in okay yep because you don't want to see anything nope. yeah that's looking pretty stinking cool okay so we're actually starting the front ones we gotta still think on the rear one so what we've done is the rear airbags are still up at height three we've dumped all the air out of the front two We've got the body on a stand, and then we've got a little jack for the one we're working on. So they're going to run it up and down and really dial in exactly where we want this all mounted. So we'll be back in a minute. Right, and I just got the wheel turned all the way in, and there's no way that that's going to even come close to hitting if we place that where we're talking about. So, okay, let's get cracking. Okay, people, 
this is our little test setup. We had to reclock this. We got this spaced. We've used the jack. We've played back and forth. We're going to drill a hole where that line is and a hole there and have a six and one quarter inch rod and we are going to have exactly what we want. Okay, so for these front ones, since we're coming in that two inches, I'm going to go ahead and just do both of those real quick. I don't know that we actually have to shorten them and I don't want to if I don't have to. Okay, so getting ready to drill and tap this. You can see there's plenty there. So let's get that done real quick. Got my tap Boy. out. It's not the easiest spot to get in and, and tighten them up because those bolts, the head is right up against this body. They did not leave a lot of room here. So luckily they only go on once, we hope. We are doing one last clearance check. I actually have these, well not arbitrarily anymore. So when we were all the way down at this length, that put us right to the inside of that marker. So now he's bringing it up again and we'll put it right to the inside of that marker. And this hole to that hole should be this length. We'll know in just a minute. Just like that, we've done one quarter of the work. Not even completely because we haven't even done the wiring. But boy, that's not as easy to do as we had hoped. And like I said before, we're not going to trim that down if we don't have to. And it doesn't look like we have to. So, we just got to pull the wheel on the driver's side and make like sample. So, oh yeah, he's going to bring it up. Yeah, we got tired of hitting the frame with the long handle. So we just threw a little guy on there. So we did drill and tap the holes there. And this one is stress relieved. And they don't bind. And... As he's coming up on, so you can see what's happening here. As it's coming up, obviously it's changing resistance here. He should be getting ready to hit the bump stop. Yep, he's in the bump stop. And see, it's inside that window. Here, I'll go to the computer and show you the window we're talking about. It's a little easier to see here. They have some reference marks that they put. And they really want this inside and that one inside if they line up ah you've gone a little too far and it might not like it well while he's putting that on i happen to crawl down and notice hey there's a couple threaded holes there. of course there are that's where the sway bar used to ride so yeah that's where we're gonna attach the wire harness it'll attach up here if it's not stuck there and then it cannot possibly get pinched in any of the suspension so yeah that that's gonna work out slick you know, it's a real bummer that this sticks out so far and we had to limit our travel, but hopefully this car still turns pretty good. We'll find out in a parking lot one day. Once again, we find ourselves later than we think it is, so it's time to wrap up. Got the tops drilled, but not tapped. Got that bottom one drilled. So, and then with as hard as it is to put those bolts in, we don't have time for that tonight. I have to travel in the morning. So at this point, we're just gonna leave the front airbags empty. These rear airbags are full. Hopefully, when I come back, the back of this car is still sitting up high. If it is, that means we solved all those leaks. The front, eh, it wasn't leaking, so we're pretty happy with that. It held air and didn't change pressure or height for over a week. Um, let's see, what else we got? Let's go check in on Pixie's work here. Looks like she's been doing a little sewing and a little working. All right, what do we got here, Pix? I have a glue down to about here, front and back. Um, and I'm getting a little loopy, so <laughs> next weekend I'll come and... And finish that and get that around? Finish the two corners. Yeah, one thing that's nice with that glue is all you got to do is hit it with heat, too, and it reactivates. Mm -hmm. So we learned that. No, that's gonna look so nice in the car. Yeah, that's that's looking really good. You're doing a great job. I'm sorry you're getting a little loopy. <laughs> yeah, probably doesn't help that I didn't have one. Yeah, yeah, and then we had uh, uh, some habanero pepper sauce. Yum. Made, uh, yum, yum. made us all awake. <laughs> so 
at this point we got to clean up and get out of here so all right guys what do we say thanks, thanks for watching, watching.